What's up guys and welcome to Work Wednesday. Yes, I've got glasses on today because it's a rainy day and I feel like having glasses on. All right, in all honesty, here's what today's about. We're going to talk about getting free gear and this should be fun for everybody. So let's dive right into it. Now, when I say getting free gear, I'm exaggerating. Uh, nothing in this world is free and you have to work for everything. So this is how it works. If I go over to this handy dandy site here, one that I know and love very well, uh, if I slide over to the artist tab and check out artists, you can see at Copper Sound we have a nice list of artists, including the Jack White, Adam Goldberg, who is an actor. Uh, you might have seen him in Saving Private Ryan and a few other things. And Billy Gibbons, the list goes on and on and on from Keith Urban to uh, Phil X from Bon Jovi and Rick Nielsen and Rob Scallion. You should check out that video. That is a killer video. But what is all this getting to? Well, in order to become artists, they didn't necessarily just knock on the door and ask. Some of them just went and bought the pedals. The rest may have asked, but we never gave anything for free. In fact, if we look back at the artist page, you can see under this tab, there's an artist inquiry where people can apply to be an artist and they write to Jordan and then we discuss it uh, in the shop and we decide whether or not the person is artist worthy. And then artists get a certain discount for being Copper Sound artists. But nobody gets anything for free and real big names never even ask for a discount. They just got the pedal. Like they just went and bought it. That being said, it's not too hard to get a discount as an artist, even if you don't have a big following. So that's what today's episode is going to be about. We're going to dive right into it. So I'm going to jump back over to this uh, web search here and I'm going to type in one of my favorite watch companies. If you know anything about me, you know, I'm, I'm a, a big watch guy. I love watches. So uh, as we go in here, scroll down to the bottom, generally on a website, you'll find something called contact. And what you're looking for when you're contacting is you're looking for someone's email address. A lot of these, if we go to uh, Zenith's website, which is another watch company, uh, they have no artist relations. Theirs is just a contact us form. And it leaves you kind of in the dark as far as would you get a reply. So why am I not seeing it here? Contact us, big box. Big button. So this is a form and the downside with forms, uh, as we'll kind of discuss is with a form, it's very impersonal, no matter what you can't attach files, you can't explain what you've done and who your audience is. And so it becomes more difficult to reach out to a particular person. Whereas if you get someone's email, you can make it very personal to that person because you can do some research on who the person receiving it is, or you can also just have a real one-to-one -one conversation that you know is going directly to their email, email and not just to a spam bot folder. So as we continue on this, I do want to press the fact that nothing is free and everything is a trade of some value to another. So what that means is if you have a great enough value, maybe you can get stuff for free from certain companies. I've gotten strings before in the past for free, um, but most things are just heavy discounts, 30, 40, 50, 60%. But either way, when I'm going into this, this is my process. First, I find a company, and I'm looking down here because I have my notes so that I can keep going. I find a company uh, that I stand behind, a company that I really believe in. Uh, that's why I'm going to actually do this live in front of you guys. I'm going to write these companies, and then next week we'll touch base and see if any of them wrote back. Don't always expect them to write back. Sometimes they will, and you'll be surprised, and they'll just be like, yeah, no problem. You're an artist. Here's 30%. Um, sometimes they'll take months to get back, but then they'll be like, yeah, we'll give you free strings. It's it's really just a matter of reaching out is the big step. So, but find a company that you really could stand behind. Don't just write out to every string company out there because if you hate a certain string company and you're never gonna put them on your guitar anyway, then there's no point in even asking for free strings because you're never gonna use them. So why waste your time? Uh, learn about that company, meaning do some research so that when you write that company, they're like, wow, this person really knows our brand. Figure out what it could cost 
for them to advertise in your circle. So what that point means is everybody has a circle. You might not be huge on social media. You might not be huge on YouTube. You might not be huge uh, playing your instrument, but everybody has a, a circle and that circle has connections. You remember that game when we were kids called the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon? That's essentially what you want to be playing when you're dealing with this situation. Who are all the people I can connect with? And what does that do for you as the company I want free stuff from, right? So that's what, we, what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure out, okay, does Rolex pay $10 million a month to advertise to the greater Boston? Yes, probably. Wouldn't it be cheaper if they didn't and they just gave my band a whole bunch of Rolex watches since we're playing in every high-end club in Boston? All the rich people are there. That's targeted marketing right there. Hey, Rolex. Hey. But these are the kind of things you're trying to think of. You're trying to think of how do I position myself to be the cheaper advertisement for that company? The next point kind of bounces off that one, which is to figure out how to make their product valuable in your company. So for example, watches. How do I make that as a musician? How do I make that work for me? For example, I got sponsored by a company named Solgard, which recycles plastic out of the ocean and turns it into high-end luggage, which is really nice. I love my Solgard stuff. In fact, the backpack that's somewhere around here is also Solgard. Uh, and here I am advertising for it, but it goes to every gig with us. It goes around the world with us, our band tours. It was easy to put those things together and be like, look, this is what happens. We're all over the world. Our, our total reach is this. Even if those numbers don't reflect on Instagram or on social media, if you can somehow put together those numbers, you'll get it. And how that works is, say you play a festival and there's 20,000 people that show up at that festival, but only five people are coming to your booth because your family's coming. They don't need to know that only five people came to your booth. All you need to say is, I'm playing this festival and 20,000 people come here and those 20,000 people are this type of person and it's gonna be direct marketing for your company. So instead of trying to advertise to a million people just to get 20,000 people to turn their heads at your company, I can grab those 20,000 people for a fraction of the cost. Now here's where the work comes in and the proof that nothing is free. I'm gonna now go and do this with a couple companies and I'll do some video of it and speed through it and do a little montage thing uh, for you guys. I'll edit it down so it's not so long and then uh, I'll let you know at the end the companies that I picked and we'll see in the next couple weeks which ones right back and what deals I get. Notice how I'm fairly certain I'll still get the deals. And again, those reasons I mentioned is why. I am not Justin Timberlake. I'm not touring with Justin Timberlake. I am a guitar player for Kim Cherry, who's a seasoned finalist of The Voice, which helps in an email. But some of the things that I'll write in those emails are the fact that I own Copper Sound Pedals, that I... Uh, tour with Kim Cherry of Voice and that I teach to high-end clients in the affluent neighborhoods of Boston. Those things usually help when it's when it's coming to the companies that I'm targeting because I'm targeting companies that are the high price ticker, uh, those guys that are like expensive. Here's another thing I wanted to point out real quick. When you're going down to look for the person to contact, uh, try to find the person that's gonna fit what you're looking for. So obviously not watch repair if I'm trying to get a discount on a watch. And probably not the online store either. Although that might not be a bad one to try if they didn't have a PR person. Public relations is great. So I'm gonna write this person, Katrin, I like that name, without the H, it's nice, it's cool. Uh, and first I'm gonna do some research on that person. So. I'll speed the video along now so you don't have to watch every little thing I'm doing. All right, so I did some research on uh, Katerin, who's the public relations person. And just when I'm doing the research on those people, I'm not snooping too far into their life. I don't want to know any big details. I'm just kind of curious, does she have any other jobs that had to do with music? Is there a common ground that we can talk about in the email that I write so that immediately I come off as the buddy that uh, she never knew or whatever. There isn't, other than the fact that she works for a watch company and I love watches, so that's gonna be easy too. Again, you wanna come off as somebody who knows something about the 
company that the person works for because it always makes people feel special if you talk about their company because they're proud to work there generally otherwise they would leave the job and work somewhere else right now there's different approaches when it comes to this you can come off a uh, firm which also a lot of people like uh, and just have artist endorsements this is me or just hey you know one of those things I personally I like to do this kind of thing with artist endorsements question mark like I come off kind of is the like hey sorry to bother you guy and that's just kind of my personality when it comes to asking for things uh, does it always pay off no definitely not so do what you personally feel is a good approach when it comes to this all right so I've written out the the first letter I'm gonna send all of the other ones I don't want to waste you guys the time and go through every single one but essentially some of the key points that I've put in here are uh, first I talk a little bit about the company I was writing uh, to see if no one's worked with artists uh, my name is Tris Koff and I talk about what I do, lead guitar player for Kim Cherry of NBC's The Voice. Then I talk about our clientele and I kind of hype up our clientele a bit and talk about how they're wealthy, how most of them wear Rolexes, but their kids are getting married and they're paying for the wedding and so we want a hip brand like Nomos to be you know, on our wrists so we can help them sell. And then I talk about numbers a bit and I go into, uh, we got 200 guests per wedding in 53 weddings, which is 10,600 qualified customers because they're all wealthy. And uh, this is this is important to these companies because what you have is you have um, qualified like people who already are into expensive watches, and then you have a younger generation and you qualified their customers. Meaning, normally they would have to spend tens of thousands, if not millions of dollars in ad revenue just to put up billboards that only five or six people are gonna see a day that could actually afford that. So it's gonna take them months to get to 10,000 qualified customers and it's gonna take them millions of dollars. And they know this, so when they see those kind of numbers and they see that you can qualify the customers for them, meaning you can find the ones that are gonna buy their brand, it's it's almost a no-brainer. So. That being said, some of these companies just see this in their like advertisement and they throw it in the trash. So you're going to get that too. You're, you're not going to get some responses. But good companies generally will read through what you have to say. And if they read through it and they see numbers like that, they're usually willing to give you something. So let's see. I'm going to do a whole bunch of companies today and over the next couple of days. I'll tell you guys next week the ones that I ended up sending out and I'll tell you the results. And uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. As far as that goes, I think that's a good way to start Work Wednesday. It was a lot of information. Let me know if you have more questions. I'll talk more about it next work Wednesday and have a great week. See you tomorrow for Theory Thursday.